Hi everybody, in this video, we're gonna learn all about how to create a smooth sliding menu. Now, this sounds pretty straightforward and like we've said so many times in the past, it seems simple, but because we are talking about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, there's a lot of complexity and just weird things that might happen if you aren't paying attention. So we'll take care of all of that in a few moments. So first of all, what exactly do I mean by a sliding menu? So I actually have a live example, so you don't have to look at this, the screenshot of what I'm, what I'm referring to. So what we see here is a menu and it's an empty page, nothing really going on here. And you see, uh, you see a blue button that when I click it, a little menu appears. And notice how the menu appears. It is, it is animated, it slides in, I click anywhere on the menu, like for example, I can dismiss it, or I can click on a link to get the exact same effect. So if I click on contact, for example, notice that the menu disappears as well. So pretty straightforward, we have a way of showing, making the menu sh appear, and then we have a way of making the menu disappear. And what we're gonna see in the next few minutes is trying to make all of that work, trying to put the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript together that gets us the effect that we're kind of looking for. So before we go and look at all of the, the technical implementation details, let's talk about how this menu works. So, you know, I decided to just use some diagrams to help illustrate what's going on. So here's what you see initially. You see a simple page, nothing really going on here. You see a little blue button. And when the button is clicked, you notice that the menu starts to appear. You know, it slides in, so you you know you kind of see it partially. Then it animates fully into view, covering up all of your all of your content. Now, the way this is all done isn't as complicated as it seems. It's very simple. So when your page is loaded initially, you have a width and a height. You know, we call it a viewport width, viewport height, or your browser width and height, basically. And what we've done with our menu is we positioned it in just a way so that it is just a little bit to the left of all of your content. So however wide your content is, that equivalent width is how, how wide your menu is, and it's just pushed off to the left by that exact same amount. So what we have is an arrangement like this. So it's nothing quite as magical as it might have seemed. We have our menu hidden completely out of view. Then you have your content, which is visible here. And all that we're really doing is ensuring that when we do the right thing, the menu slides into view where its position is now the top left corner of our browser window. And when the menu disappears, this top left corner is the position of a browser window shifted left by however wide the window actually is. Now that seems a little crazy, but we look at some CSS to help make, make sense of that. So the way you hide the menu, you know, here's some pseudocode, we'll look at the real code in a second, is that our menu has a position value of fixed to ensure it isn't really following the normal box layout. And we're ensuring its top and left corner is set to zero. So it's gonna be flush against the, the top left corner of our browser window. And we have a width and height set to 100 VW and 100 VH. Now if you're not familiar with VW and VH, they stand for viewport width and viewport height. It's a unit that is you know, fairly new, it's been around for just a few years, that allows you to get the exact width and height of your viewport without having to deal with percentages or the size of your parent element or anything else like that. It literally just gives you the, the a value that you can use to you know, measure against the, the size of your actual browser window. So 100 VW means a full 100% width, 100 VH means a full 100% height. So our menu is literally right now taking up all available screen space, which is exactly what we want. And the way we shift it left is pretty straightforward. We use a transform and we're using a trusty translate 3D function and notice the horizontal position. It's not zero VW, it's actually negative 100 VW. We're literally shifting it left by 100% of the screen width. And then X in a Y and Z value zero because we aren't, you know, this menu isn't sliding up and down, it's sliding left and left and right. And we just talked about VW and VH, so I'm gonna skip this. And the way you show the menu is pretty straightforward as well. We just have to change one value, and that is the horizontal position of Translate 3D. So in this case, you know, imagining that we are continuing the pseudocode from earlier, you might have a situation where you have the menu and then a class value of visible that you tack along to it. And then you target that by just saying the menu that visible with a transform and a Translate 3D value of zero VW. And then again, or vertical and Z position completely ignored. But this basically makes sure your menu is no longer off screen, but for fully visible. So that's that's the you know the the rapid fire overview of how this effect works, but that's that's only part of what we're trying to do. Let's go ahead and actually build it. So to make it easier to have this, you know, to build this example, I created a small code pen where you can actually start off and figure out what's going on. And you can see the URL right here. So do pause it and and get it onto your screen. You'll see something that looks kind of like this. And let me zoom in a bit so you can see things clearly. And let me maximize the maximize the HTML editor. 
And what you see here is just the, the basic markup needed to get the menu to appear. So you can see some content, the blue button, and so on. The cool stuff isn't really there yet. And so from here on out, you can actually work in CodePen itself, fork it, and then make modifications and follow along with the video. Or you can just copy and paste all of this into your favorite code editor and work from there. Use whatever, whichever one you prefer. I'm a big fan of using the Atom code editor, as many of you might know. So I have the exact same item set up right here, and you can see a preview of it displaying on screen right now. And if you look at our markup, there's nothing really crazy going on here. You know, we have our button called with an ID layer round button. And we have a container that contains just the, the text and a bullet list of lorem ipsum text that you see. So that's really all that is. And the CSS is really just there to support this style and make sure it looks kind of presentable and not, not like ASCII art or something that is very retro. All right. So now let's go ahead and start building out our menu. So right now we don't have the menu defined yet. And so what we're gonna do first is anywhere in your, you know, your markup under body, I like to be at the very top for this one, say div ID equals flyout menu. And inside it, we're gonna paste uh, a lot of you know, heading elements. And the way I'm gonna do that is this. So first we have a heading element, H2, and it, inside it's gonna be a, a link, so A H R E F. And our link isn't gonna go anywhere, so I'm just gonna use the, use the classic pound sign and type in the value home. And then just close out all of these tags. So we now have one element. And so what I'm gonna do next though, is instead of having this element be, you know, we have, we have a bunch of links, instead of writing them all out over and over again, I'm gonna copy and paste them. So we now have four links that ideally will appear and work as expected. Notice that if you look on the right hand side of the preview, you now see the words home replaced multiple times. Let's replace that with about contact and search. Now, you can actually put anything you want here. It doesn't really matter because this is a fully working menu. It's just the important part is the sliding of the menu, not the content inside of it. But once you've done that, you can see that our menu is slowly starting to appear here. And yeah, I know it doesn't look like what we had earlier. And the reason is that we haven't actually added any CSS to it. We haven't styled it to look the way it needs to do. So let's go and fix that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and create target our flat menu element in our CSS. So I create a selector called hashtag flat menu. And here's where we're gonna do all of the all of the styling to get the menu to look and behave the way we want it to. So first we're gonna set a width of 100 VW and a height of 100 VW immediately after that. And once I've done that, notice that all of our content is literally pushed off the screen because we are take, we're telling this element, our flight menu element, to take up all the available browser space. And the way you can avoid doing what it's just doing right now, which is affecting the layout of other elements, is to remove it from the layout itself. So I'm gonna set a position value fixed, which ensures that it is no longer, you know, part of the of the default layout behavior, which means that now it overlays over, you know, all the content. That, that's okay though. We'll deal with that in a separate way as well. So right now we have position value fixed, and let's go ahead and set this position to top zero, left zero to ensure it's in the top left corner, and let's get a background color also. Now you can use any color you want, but I'm a big fan of that yellow color that is also part of the same in the logo. So I'm just gonna set FFEE. -E. I think I may have like a few extra zeros there. FF, oh, sorry, it's only one E, FFEC. -E and now you can see that the menu just appears and it's you know in the yellow color that you might've seen it before. And now we're gonna shift it over completely to the left. You know, we're at that point where the menu no longer needs to be visible in the full size that you see it right now, but it can actually be shifted over. And that's where the Translate 3D trick we saw earlier comes into play. So I'm using a transform property and setting a Translate 3D of 100 BW, and it's actually gonna be negative 100 BW because we want it to be shifted left, and then zero, zero for everything else. And once I've done this, notice what happens. The menu no longer appears because it is just off the left edges of, of the browser window they're currently seeing. And the next thing we're gonna do is specify a transition. You know, we kind of spoke about it, but now let's go ahead and actually add it. And as you can imagine, we're gonna be animating the transform property. That's gonna a duration of 0.3 seconds. And for the easing function, I created a custom one using the cubicbezier.com site that I've referred to many times to create some really cool effects that are better than the, the default ones you see here. So this is basically it. Oh, last thing, we wanna make sure that the 
menu doesn't actually display scroll bars or do anything weird like that. It normally doesn't, but it's just good to be in, in a habit of doing that. So that's our flat menu. We just styled it. We said it's gonna be the full size of the browser window, should be completely left. And when we when transform properties adjusted, we will animate it into view. And of course, that doesn't mean that it works, of course, you know, because we don't have any code to actually toggle the value of our transform, but we'll do, deal with that in a little bit. And just for completeness, you know, you don't have to type all this in. The menu does look a little unfinished right now. So I have a few more style rules that you can add to make that work fine. So I have a flat menu H2A selector that targets all of our links and gives them a color that is like dark gray, pushes them a little bit off the left margin by 15 pixels and removes the underline by default. You know, this is like 1990s, so the links don't have to be underlined. And when you hover over them though, we do want them underlined, you know, kind of just paying some homage to, to back in the day. All right, and so of course you can't see it right now, but trust me, it's gonna work fine. Let me get the indentation right. And now we're golden. Okay, so now what we've done is we got the menu and we got it styled properly. What we need to do is though, is deal with the case where the menu actually is fully visible. And the way we're gonna do that is by just adding another style rule that takes care of the visible case. So right now, flat menu by default is the invisible case. Let's imagine that we have a class value called show that if we were to add to our element, will cause the menu to appear. So I'm gonna create a style rule called flat menu show. And in it, I'm gonna set my transform property again. And I wanna overwrite the translate 3D value we had earlier from negative 100 VW to just zero VW. And this ensures that our flyout menu will be visible when the class value of show is added to it. In fact, let's see what it looks like. So I'm gonna to go to my markup and where I have my flyout menu defined, I'm gonna say class equals show. And once I've done that, notice how you'll see the menu just appear. And of course, this is not gonna disappear or anything like that because that is code we haven't added yet. But I just wanted to make sure that when the show class value is added to our element, the style rule kicks in and the appropriate behavior we want actually applies. Now, once everything works together, you'll notice that this will actually animate into view, but the, the final destination makes a lot of sense. So this is pretty good. Now we get to, you know, probably the easy part of this, you know, it sounds, you know, and it never sounds easy, but it actually is the easy part, which is adding some JavaScript. So the JavaScript we're gonna do is pretty simple. We wanna listen for a click event on the button, so they can show the menu. We wanna listen for a click event on the menu itself. So if you click on the menu, the, the menu disappears, so there are two click events here. And the where menu appears and disappears is by us toggling the class value of show on our flyout menu element that we kinda of did manually in markup. So nothing too crazy going on there. So let me first you know, scroll up a little bit so you can see more on of the page. And let's go ahead and add the JavaScript. So the first thing we're gonna do is get a JavaScript reference to both the menu and the button. So var round button equals document.querySelector. And our button ID is called round button. So let's go ahead and reference that. And now we have our round button element. And let's do the same thing for the flyout menu. So var flyout menu and it's referenced by hashtag flyout menu. Uh, you know, not not too getting not, not getting not getting very creative here with, with regards to all the all of our names now. Now, what we want to do though is add the event listener to make sure that a click registers and calls the appropriate code from there. So a round button that add event listener, and the event we're going to listen for is click. And don't let the word click fool you. It also deals with taps and touches and things like that from other input methods besides just the just the mouse. I could be using pointer events as well, but didn't want to complicate things too much here. And when the click event is overheard, we call a function called show menu. And for flyout menu, this is gonna be the case where when you click anywhere in the menu itself, we wanna hide the menu. So we're gonna send for a click event. And instead of calling show menu, we're gonna call hide menu instead. And false for the last argument regarding whether this thing bubbles or not. So now let me actually, you know, add the space back. It disappears every time I hit save, actually. So let's start with the show menu function first. So what we do for show menu, like we talked about earlier, is all we're gonna do is add a show val class value to our flyout menu element. So show menu, I'm adding the you know argument E because it is an event handler. And let's say flyout menu dot class list dot add and show. And the classes API allows you to add, remove, and just toggle class values and elements pretty pretty easily. And now I'm gonna do the function hide menu. 
that's it, hide menu, pretty straightforward. And do the exact opposite of that. Let me get the formatting just right. My keyboard isn't cooperating with me properly. And let's do flyout menu, that class list. And instead of adding the class via show, let's do a remove of the value of show as well. And just for you know good behavior, I'm also gonna call the stop propagation method from our event argument. Now this is not necessarily important for this particular example, but you can imagine cases where you have elements behind the menu that might be getting the events, might be getting touch events and so on, that you don't want it to actually react because your menu gets, should be the one that gets all the activity and then once the menu disappears, it's business as usual. So this kind of ensures that, that it happens. It's a good practice to get into, not particularly the most important thing that you need to deal with. Now there's one last thing that I want to talk about as well. And that's to do with like what exactly happens to your page when the menu appears. What you don't want to do is when you're interacting with the menu or clicking on things, like just like the stop propagation expression I gave earlier, you don't want to scroll the background or do things behind the scenes as well. And one of the ways you can fix that is by forcing your document to no longer display scroll bars when the menu is visible. So in the show menu, go back and add document.body.style.overflow to the overflow property to hidden. This will ensure scroll bars don't appear, we're sending the CSS property um, hidden on our body element. And likewise, when we hide the menu, let's make that to auto. We want to get back to whatever default behavior that it had earlier, so that way we aren't exactly you know, detracting from normal behavior. And that's pretty much it. So now let's go ahead and save and see what this looks like. So now I'm just going to click on the menu, the menu appears. And then when I click anywhere outside of the menu, it disappears and the button brings in the menu. So it's pretty cool, you know, it all works. And what we've really done is just, essentially all the things, all the code, everything we've done is this. We want to make sure that our menu was hidden out of view. And then when we want the menu to appear, we make sure that we set the horizontal position of our transform to zero VW. And everything, all the code, all the CSS is really designed to just make sure that it doesn't look terrible and it's really elegantly done. So there you have it, a very simple example where we took a menu and we deconstructed how it would work and then we ended up just building it from scratch. So as you can see, the really great example of how HTML, CSS and JavaScript can really play well together to create the effect that you see. You know, that's something, something we underplay when you talk about animation. We look about animation in terms of just JavaScript or just CSS, but in many cases, especially when it comes to user interfaces, you're using a little bit of both and setting tips and tricks from each in you know in each, each other's domain. Like for example, setting the overflow property in JavaScript as opposed to CSS. You, know, you just pick and choose your battles and this is one of those things where they all play really nicely together. So with that, if you have any questions, I definitely want to hear them. Post in the forums at format.group.com. You can post and contact me in other means as well, but the easiest way is the forums because you have a lot of formatting options. You can search for them, you can link to them, and you're limited by 140 characters as in, in the case of Twitter or the weird lack of formatting you have in YouTube. So use the forums. And of course, if you like this video, tell your friends and enemies. You know, I do think that people you don't like would still benefit from learning how to create a, a really awesome sliding menu. And hit subscribe so you can be notified when new videos like this come out. And if you're interested in like little bits and pieces of information about web development, UI design, just, or pixel art, just you know, random things, follow me at Karupa on Twitter. And I tweet about a lot of things that may be of interest to you. So, you know, check it out. And of course, buy my book. If you found this topic interesting, there are a whole bunch of other topics similar to this that are also interesting that I think you might like. And you can check out my book, Creating Web Animations, published by O'Reilly. And the bird in the, in the book is a macaw. Yeah, in case you were wondering. All right, guys, I'll see you guys next time.